Blessed be and welcome to the Circle of Hecka. So today we're going to talk about the magic circle. Now there are different types of magic circles. There's uh, magician's magic circles, ceremonial magic circles. There's uh, magic circles that um, are used by shamans. There's the witch's magic circle. Now we're going to be talking about the witch's magic circle and primarily, put my teeth back in, primarily we're going to be talking about how the Circle of Hecker does a magic circle. How the Circle of Hecker does a magic circle. There are different forms of magic circles even within witchcraft itself. Wicca magic circle is different to a, uh, a, stif a stream of um, witchcraft. Each type of Wicca may do their magic circle slightly different. Now there are core set ways of doing it so there's just the little nuances that, uh, that people seem to disagree on. Now my stance is that um, you need to have a reason behind what it is that you're doing um, and if you just go oh well that's the way it's always been done um, then that's not really a good enough reason it can be a reason why that you've done it for a while but you still need to have a reason as to well why do you do it that way why has it always been done that way then you've got something to back it up and then you can make an actual um, an educated decision as to whether well actually the other way feels better but it's the way everyone's doing it so that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, doesn't really gel either. You do what feels right for you. You're going to be the conduit to the magical energy so if it feels right to you and it flows better through you in a certain direction then go with that direction. So I'm going to say some things that many witches will disagree with and that's only because they don't do it that way. And as I said, I'm not telling you that this is what all witches do, that this is the only way to do something. As I said again, this is the way the Circle of Hecker does it. And if you like it, great, take it on board. If you don't, then don't, it's that simple. All right, so the magic circle. So what is the magic circle? The magic circle is, let's say, it's more of a, of a sphere. It's not necessarily a magic circle. The circle is the part that we see um, that sometimes is delineated on the ground or on the floor, depending on where it is that you're doing it. Witches prefer to do things outside. It's just, it's just easier, it's nicer, the energy um, seems to flow a little bit better. But that's not saying that energy doesn't flow within uh, the context of someone's house. It just depends on where it's situated and also whether um, you know, doing something in the backyard may, may not be conducive to the magical work that you're doing and so inside may work better. You may not be able to get to a space that is uh, secluded um, to work outside, so again inside will be the, the space that you use. Um, and the circle is the temple of the witch. Now if you're constructing your magic circle within the confines of a, of a, of a room, of, a, of your room, that room is going to start to uh, take on that magical energy. It's going to start to permeate the area of that room. So your room would end up being a temple in itself. Okay, you can construct the magic circle within that, but it would still have a little bit of residual magical energy in there. And, um, and that would be that would some people, if they happen to maybe walk past or if you invited them into that, that space, they would feel a, a difference in the energy. Um, and and we've, we've talked about how energy permeates rooms and, and, um, and, and different forms of, of energy um, before, so um, I won't go into that in too much depth. Now, the magic circle is our temple. So when we're outside, we're constructing our temple uh, as, as we go. And it's the act of constructing that temple which brings us into, uh, into alignment with the, with the energy that we want to work with. So say that you um, have had a bad day, um, things haven't gone right, you've been really harried and, and stressed and, and rushed. 
and you go to construct your magic circle. Obviously the first thing that you will do is try to, to cleanse yourself and, and uh, take that um, the worries of the day and let them leave you and just you know, dissipate onto the floor um, and into the ground to be converted. Now uh, you would then maybe do some meditation depending on, on how good you are at just throwing off uh, the worries of the day and getting into that space but a little bit of meditation to again get you into into that um, alignment now the actual construction of the magic circle again works on bring you into that magical space as you're constructing that space you're also constructing that space within yourself so don't think of it in terms of just creating a space on the, on the outside. You are also creating that space on the inside because remember we've talked about before, um, as within, so without. So what's happening on the inside is reflected on the outside. So, and what's happening on the outside is reflected on the inside. So as you're constructing that magic circle, you're also bringing yourself into that sacred space. You're also creating that sacred space within yourself and in turn that sacred space is then being created from the inside and manifesting on the outside. So your magic circle will, as I said, what you actually see would be um, a delineation or, or marker on, on the ground. Whether that is from some stones that you have, um, whether it is that you've actually physically gotten a stick, um, if you're outside obviously, and, and scored a mark into the ground, uh, that's not really necessary, but if it helps you to, to know the the, uh, where the circle ends and, and, and where it starts, then that's, that's a good, um, good thing to, to do in the beginning, but it's not something that you need to do all the time. It's just to have that reference um, to start off with. When you're on the in, within a room, say, and you're doing your magic circle, um, you see many pictures of, of magicians' magic circles, and they've had a, a like a, a carpet or some kind of um, um, sheet that they've put on the ground and they've painted the circle and they've painted symbols and and different things now that's another good thing that you can do and that will help you when you're starting out to to focus on the space that's within the circle um, and, and creating that 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 circle space um, but again it's not necessary because if you are creating a magic circle, I would always push it out so that it kind of moves in and, and, the, and the, the walls of your space also are part of the magic circle. So it kind of moves in and, and squeezes out just a little bit so that wherever you are within that space, you're within the magic circle and you don't need to worry about, oh, oh darn, I've left something over here which I need within the circle but I can't get to it because the circle is between, the edge of the circle is between me and that thing which is still in the same room that I'm in. So um, you know, especially when you're starting out sometimes you think you've got all those, those bits and pieces but there will always be that thing of, oh I forgot that, that's in my ritual and you'll have to, you know, your, your whole space and your whole train of thought will be, um, will be broken and then you'll have to start again. So just push that space out just a little bit further than you than the uh, the, the confines of the wall, and and uh, then you'll be you'll be fine. Now the magic circle again, um, as I said, is a sphere. So if you looked at uh, a sphere and the excuse me, um, if you looked at a sphere and the edge of the sphere, um, the centre of the sphere would be um, on the ground. So you'd have a dome on the top and you have a dome underneath. Um, because when you think about um, energy, energy isn't going to just kind of walk along and go, oh, there's a circle in the ground, okay, um, uh, uh, can't get in, okay, and then walk away. No, energy is going to go, oh, all right, let's go over the top, bam, or let's go underneath, bam. Okay, so if your circle is used as a, as a means of um, protection, then you have to remember protecting above and protecting below. So that's where a sphere works well, um, works quite well. So you have that sphere of energy and you thinking about that sphere as, as a vortex and you would be inside that sphere and the energy would be um, spiraling out and also spiraling 
um, underneath so that you would have that, that, that energy. Now, in the Southern Hemisphere, there is, seems to be a little bit of, um, bit of contention as to the direction that the circle would be cast. Now, in the Northern Hemisphere, um, you would uh, cast the circle um, diosal. And diosal um, for the Northern Hemisphere equates to clockwise, or as you said, sunwise. And we've translated sunwise to be the way that a clock, the hands of the clock would, would go. So it's easy for people to, to um, understand that diosal is sunwise, which is clockwise. So you go in a clockwise motion. So you start, um, whether it's in the north or whether it's in the east, and you um, go around the circle that way, casting the circle. Um, and if you want to de deconstruct the circle, or if um, you were doing, a say, a ritual that was more on a feminine um, uh, feminine energies that you would want to, to bring in, um, because obviously Dioso, um, as we've been told, is um, equated to sunwise, the sun, so it's a masculine, um, 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 active kind of energy that you are creating the circle with, you're creating it in an active way. And if you were doing it in a Wittishan's way, or anti-clockwise way, or a feminine, more receptive way, then you would, and wanting those, those receptive um, feminine energies, then you would cast a circle in a Wittishan's manner. Okay, so whatever you do one way, you need to do it the other way to unmake, to deconstruct. Okay, and again, there's no right way or wrong way as to, to how to do the circle. Depending, it depends on what the circle is for. As I said, if you're going to do a more feminine circle, then Wittishans is a great way if you're going to be doing some kind of introspection, um, some shadow work, some of that um, going deep in, inside yourself, then casting a shadow Wittishans would be uh, quite ideal. Now, in the Southern Hemisphere, um, the sun, actually, if you're looking um, from above. The sun still goes from east to west, okay, but it travels, um, say, on the elliptic, I think that's the, the right word, it travels more in an anti-clockwise motion. So it still goes from east to west, but the, the kind of, the, the arc that it takes, the sun moves and looks like it's going in an anti-clockwise direction. And witches in the southern hemisphere has said, have said that, okay, um, diosul um, or sunwise uh, is um, anti-clockwise in the southern hemisphere because the sun moves in an anti-clockwise direction. Now that's fine, um, but that's not the way the circle of Hecker does it. Um, one, and as I said, I've been taught to do it in a clockwise direction, but I also, uh, after quite a bit of introspection, have worked out that that is the way that the circle will need to be constructed and I will uh, elaborate as we go and you'll understand why. Um, one, because we are creating something, so it is that the active doing element that is needed, that, that actual drive. So when you uh, are doing a, something with a, a masculine energy, it is that drive, it is that energy that's being used, that pushing element to push something into existence. Now, um, when it comes to doing the, in the, in the um, Wittishan's way, um, the um, feminine um, part, it would be a more passive Way so it's constructing it in a um, in constructing it in a different way. Um, okay, so the circle of Hecker constructs their magic circles going clockwise. Okay, so that would be if you were talking to um, people from the um, southern hemisphere, then that would be our Wittishans. So hopefully you're not totally confused if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you're going, what is she talking about? Um, or in the Southern Hemisphere and you're just going, what 
what is she talking about? Many people in the Southern Hemisphere will construct their circle in the Southern Hemisphere clockwise, um, anti-clockwise motion because that is the direction that the sun travels within the sky. So that is our diosal or sunwise. Now the reason that um, we do it in the, um, which, which we'll say the northern hemisphere way of clockwise is because I've, I've done a little bit of research and it's nice to say that diosal means sunwise, but it's, it's a little bit hard to say because um, many words that are similar and mean similar things have been used. Now, diosal is taken from uh, the Gardnerian uh, form of witchcraft, um, saying that diosal is um, sunwise. Now, there are many, um, many um, rituals that are done which will say go the way of the sun and obviously you would um, modify your ritual to go the way that the sun travels um, and you're in the southern hemisphere but when it comes to constructing a circle um, this is um, a slightly different for us so diosal is actually uh, the the kind of the misspelling of a of, of few words um, but basically the Scottish Gaelic word disil or the Middle Irish word desil. I'm probably um, butchering some of these um, pronunciations so I apologise. Um, later modified by English speakers uh, um, to be desil um, meaning right or wise or towards the right. So if you think of right as not necessarily being the right hand, but towards the right way, the way that um, it, is, it is done. So right-handed. Um, now, uh, these words all share a common Latin root word, which is dexter, meaning right, right-handed, skillful or favorable. So it is the favorable way. Now, Widdishans, which can be spelled Widdishans, um, Widdishans, Wedishans, um, again, I, I apologize for my butchering of the pronunciations, um, seems to come from German or Lowland Scottish. Um, in German, um, Widdishans means against the senses, that is not the usual, um, so against the grain. Um, or the like, which is um, how we get the, the sinister connotation. So um, if you were born um, left-handed and you, you wanted to write and do things left-handed, um, until quite recently you were forced to be right-handed because the left hand was seen as sinister, it was seen as um, satanic, it was seen as um, you, know, you, you were inviting the devil um, if you were left-handed. Um, and uh, so you were forced to write um, using your right hand because that was the right way, that was the way of God, that was the, that was the way everyone, everyone did it. Uh, so you can see how the left hand um, Widdishans has gotten its um, sinister con connotation. You also have what's known as the left hand path, which is seen as the sinister path. So going against the right or against the, um, the right hand path, so to speak, or the way of light um, would, would have been seen as being the sinister way or the wrong way. Um, now that's not saying that um, the reason that the circle of Heka constructs a circle in a clockwise motion is because we um, are going on the sinister route or that we believe that going um, diosal is the right way and everything else is the sinister way. Um, there's a little bit more into it than that. So constructing the circle, we construct the circle one way. Many pagans, many witches in the Southern Hemisphere 
do it another way. And if you're interested, there's there's plenty of things that you can um, you, know, you can Google and and, and um, find out. Calling of the 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 quarters. Now again, the way that we do it in the circle of Heka is slightly different to what many would do in the southern hemisphere or in um, in Australia, and I think in New Zealand. Um, is changing where the elements are in, in a, on this in the circle according to geography. Now again, if that works for you, that's fine. Um, but I have a, a slightly different understanding as to what the elements um, are. Um, in one respect, yes, they are. You know, wind blows. Um, you know, fires hot. Um, you know, water's wet, um, you know, all of those sort of face value uh, things. But the elements are um, metaphors and symbols for certain qualities within yourself and certain qualities within, uh, within nature. They're not, um, you know, they're not water, they're that, that element and that receptive um, energy of water. The air is that uh, is about communication and about the mind. Um, it is not necessarily about the fact that the wind blows from this direction so we're going to put air in this direction. Um, there's more to it than that. When you're constructing the magic circle, think about the fact that you are constructing a, a, an engine, a um, um, a machine of some kind that is going to manifest your your desire. So in the creation of that um, manifestation, there are certain stages that need to need to be going through. So um, so in the circle of Heka, we have air is in the east, fire is in the south, water is in the west. And Earth is in the north. There are many covens, um, and some uh, covens that are in the eastern states may may do this a little bit more. But um, there are some covens that will have uh, fire in the north, because as we move closer to the equator, it becomes hotter. Um, and having Earth in uh, the south, because as we go further, it becomes cooler. And again, that's fine if that's that's the way you work, and then you know you've you've developed a uh, a reason and an understanding as to why you you do that um, more than just face value. It's hot or it's cold. Um, and many people in the eastern states would reverse the west and the east as well. So fire, um, sorry. Um, air and water. So if you're in the eastern part of Australia, you would have water being in the um, east and you would have air being in the west. Um, but if you're in western Australia, um, you would have air in the east and water in the west. Now I hope, hopefully you're not again thoroughly confused, but I do have some diagrams to just to help you um, understand a little bit. Um, so again, that's all well and good if you are just looking at the fact that you're constructing a circle and you're looking at your geography. And there are certain um, rituals that you would do with that comes into play and that's fine. But if you're constructing a magic circle because it is more about creating almost an engine of manifestation, then you look a little bit deeper as to the qualities that those uh, elements represent and where they are situated within the circle as to how things are created. Now, everything comes from a thought. So you have the void and when the, that potentiality. So if you think from uh, the north to uh, moving to the east um, is the void, okay? So you have that void, that darkness, and you get to the east, and that is communication, it's about the mind. So everything comes from a thought, all right? So that thought comes into manifestation. That, so you move from the east, you go to the south, 
and the south is that is that will it's that spark of life it is that that active uh, doing um, energy that gives that thought a l that that spark that gives that thought that um, that jolt that it needs now you move again to the west and that west is that feminine that feminine creation part is that that emotional energy that is needed so emotion is energy in motion so it is that 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 um, part that is needed to again bring um, in t towards manifestation so you have the uh, east which is the communication you have that um, communication traveling around and going through the other elements so that spark of life um, and then you know the the cell that that is created in the um, in the womb which is the the, uh, the west um, that womb that um, and the waters of life and then you move towards the north which is earth and we are on the earth plane we are on the realm of solid manifestation so you would say that um, the earth is that part where your spell comes into manifestation and you've come full circle and you've come back to the place where the void began okay so alpha and omega the beginning and the end so there you have the the magic circle is constructed um, and, and circle comes around and the same when you call in the the quarters you would call them in in that direction okay now if you're doing something um, again if you were doing a, a, a Wittishans or an anti-clockwise then that would be um, something different because you are not trying to create something you are doing an introspection so you would um, be going deep inside so you have your sphere which is your circle you have your um, elements going around the circle creating a, a an, an, an engine a, uh, a machine um, and you have your elements which is to know to will to dare to keep silent there are other ways of, of saying it to know to dare to will to keep silent um, and it depends on on how you you um, want to put it together um, I'm not going to give you all the information as to how the, the circle of Hecker do it, but it is about that creation process. It is about how things come into manifestation using the qualities and the symbols that the elements um, are. Okay, the elements uh, are symbols of qualities and certain processes and how that comes into manifestation. So that's the reason why we cast the circle in a clockwise motion is because we are creating a machine, a manifestation machine. So I hope that helps you. Um, in uh, subsequent videos, um, I think we'll probably go through a little bit of how that circle is constructed. Again, we won't go exactly how we do things, um, but we'll give you a bit of a, a, a good good understanding to, to help you along and help you um, create your own uh, circle casting. So, uh, Merry Meet, Merry Part, and Merry Meet again, and blessed be.